champions and the boxing superstars, where are you? I'm waiting, let's fight. I'm the most avoided boxer. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to come over here in this video, you know, we're gonna go on a long walk here in Japan. This might be one of my last walks in Japan because I'm going home real soon. Been a great trip here in Japan, but I'm, I'm definitely excited to get back to the USA. But um, while we're here, you know, while we're here, this, this last remaining time in Japan, let's talk some boxing, man. Let's talk about Johnny Beck because, you know, um, I have went ahead and watched some of the highlights and the aftermath of this fight and and some of the things people are saying, and I wanted to give my take. So Johnny Beck fights Stephen Butler, a guy that, you know, we, we, we knew what he was. Like, we knew Stephen Butler was, uh, a, like, two steps down from Denzel Bentley. He was an average, you know, fighter on the world level, Canadian, you know, domestic club fighter, nothing special, but the right guy for the job so far as you know making johnny beck look like a killer is concerned because um that's what happened you know he didn't know he, he didn't know his left from his right and his right from his left and he walked right into an uppercut from hell and he got sent to the morgue and he got stopped in two rounds so johnny beck gets a knockout gets some hype going starts talking some trash you know i even as you guys saw in the beginning, beginning of the video I liked what he talked. I liked that shit he was talking so much that I, I decided to use Johnny Beck as the intro. So let me know if you guys like the new intro more than the Tyson Fury. I'll let you guys decide if we keep it or not. But um, Johnny Beck now calls out, you know, Charlo. Now calls out Canelo. And he, listen, I, I I like the fact that he's talking that trash. And 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 I think that there needs to be a plan in place from top rank, you know, as far as how they're gonna make this guy a star because, um. You know, like, to be honest with you guys, like, I'm a, I'm a Johnny Beck fan. And I've been a Johnny Beck fan for four years. I, I was a Johnny Beck fan before most of you guys even knew who he was. And I got video evidence to prove it if you go back and look at my archives. But, um, you know, Johnny Beck, I feel like he's actually regressed a little bit. I don't think Johnny Beck's as good as when I first seen him fight. Like, when, when I first seen him fight back in 2019 on the Anthony Crawler, Lomachenko undercard. I think he was better than than he is now. I think he's actually starting to show a little bit of slippage. But um, he's in a weak division. He's got a belt. The jury still out. How good is Johnny Beck, right? He. Yeah, I'm starting to hear a lot of people buy into the narrative that he is this ducked and avoided boogeyman, all because of what Andre did. Now, what Andre did is what Andre did, but that doesn't mean that the whole division's afraid of him. Okay. I'm gonna once again implore Johnny Beck. Agus Clemus, top rank boxing, and the fine folks there that he please do this. If you guys, if you guys want to make a good, a, a nice, fun fight in the middleweight division, then you, that, that would be good for ESP and that would be good for TV. Why don't you match Johnny Beck with former top rank fighter Carlos Adamas? Carlos Adamas is a fighter that has been very adamant about wanting to fight Johnny Beck. There's these rumors in boxing that you know. Carlos Adamas beat the piss out of Johnny Beck in sparring, but you know, rumors are rumors for a reason. We don't know if they're true, right? So the only way that you could disprove and dispel those rumors is if the two warriors, the two gladiators get in the ring, in the chamber of truth, and they fight. It'll be a great fight. You know, Carlos Adamas brings a lot to the table. I think he's improved that middleweight. He's starting to live the life of a fighter more. And here comes these hills. Here comes these, these, these. These Japanese hills, you're just walking straight and boom, here comes the hill. So I'm gonna start breathing a little hard, but um, um, what was I saying? Yeah, no, it, it, it'll be a good matchup because Carl Sadamas is a versatile fighter. He's a guy that can box orthodox, box southpaw. He's, he, he can be a power puncher out of both stances, stances. You know, Johnny Beck has a great amateur pedigree, good counter puncher, good front foot fighter, punch of power in both hands. There's a lot to like and a lot of value that he brings to the table for TV and networks. I, I like this, I like that fight a lot. Um, I don't think him fighting Charlo is realistic. Like all the guys he's calling out, just being honest, I think it's, I think it's unrealistic. Why? Because Charlo's on Showtime. Charlo hasn't fought in about two years. And when he does fight, he's gonna fight a tune-up fight. Canelo is at 168 
And there's really nothing to gain from him fighting a guy like Johnny back at 160, a weight class that he probably can't even make anymore, right? So that's just a pipe dream, right? So I, I feel like he has to look at Jaime Munguia, who's a champion or who's trying to be champion. But uh, Munguia's fighting Derry Vincenco, I think. So even that's off the table. There's not a whole lot of options for Johnny Beck. And I genuinely feel that one of the options that needs to be explored by him and his team is Carlos Adamas because Carlos Adamas is the one guy who I've heard say that he wants to fight Johnny Beck. I've heard his coaches say he wants to fight Johnny Beck. I've heard his people con consistently reiterate that they want that fight. And they're of the mindset that th that topic will never make that fight because of whatever uh, Adamas did to Johnny Beck in sparring. So I like Johnny Beck, but I'm not going to go crazy over his win over Stephen Butler. Stephen Butler is a fighter that really, if we, if, if we, if we just look at Stephen Butler, um, the only time he really stepped up to the world level besides this fight was when he fought Ryota Murata. And he got iced in that fight too. So Stephen Butler showed us a long time ago that he's not a world level fighter. And on top of that, Stephen Butler, if you've ever had a chance to watch him on one of these like like these Canadian cards, because I can't remember which uh, card it was. I watched like, maybe it was Kim Clavel or something like that, but he fought on an undercard of a Canadian show I watched one time. And I wasn't, imp I just wasn't impressed. I didn't see a guy that's gonna be any threat to anybody of significance at middleweight. So you gotta consider the opposition. You gotta really see this fight for what it was. And I and, and listen, I said I said that's what it was when when the fight got signed. This fight was a fight for Johnny Beck, where if you remember, he was coming off of a, of, a, of, a, of a fight with um, what's his name, with Denzel Bentley, who he was also supposed to beat the brakes off of, but then we found out Denzel Bentley was was better than we thought he was, and Denzel Bentley fought a very courageous fight in in, in a lot of ways, you know, I I, don't, I know him in Japan, but. He exposed, he exposed Johnny Beck. He exposed the vulnerabilities he had. Took the fight right to him when the first, and for the first time in his career, made him look human. So um, the middleweight division is still wide open. It's still, a, it's still a historically weak division. You got Arizona Lara fighting Danny Garcia for the belt. Danny Garcia's never had a fight at middleweight and they're not even fighting at the middleweight limit. They're fighting at 155. So, you know, the middleweight division, Sergio Martinez is ranked like four in the WBA. So the middleweight division right now is as bad as it's ever been. And we need someone. I don't, and I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Johnny Beck, Carlos Adamas, Jamal Charlo. I don't care who it is. Sergio Martinez, whoever it is. Ian Green. Whoever decides to like, grab the middleweight division by the, you know, balls and become the guy, then that's what we need in boxing because the middleweight division is one of the most historical weight classes and seeing the division be in such a horrible shape is um, nothing short of disgraceful. So uh, that's my take on Johnny Beck versus Steven Butler. Uh, my thing is this, it was great performance. I enjoyed the highlight reel, but it wasn't anything that should make me or you or any self-respecting educated boxing fans say that Johnny Beck based off of that is just gonna beat everybody, all right? Step up, call the dominance, that's the fight to make. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from being it. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hantanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one. Make sure you guys click right here.